Welcome back to Carnadies.org. Today we're going to be looking at one of the most powerful and overarching arguments for the skeptic. It's a problem that's existed for philosophers for thousands of years, basically since the beginning of philosophy, and has never truly been solved. Today, we are going to be doubting truth itself, specifically through the law of the excluded middle. So, there's an intuition out there that underlies all logic that all propositions are either true or false. In fact, the two laws that make up this claim are taken by Bertrand Russell and Alfred Whitehead in Principia Mathematica, something of the Bible of logic, as primitive propositions, things that require no argument. Let's take a look at those two laws. So, this proposition can be broken down into the law of non-contradiction, which says no proposition is both true and false. For those of you who like logic, that would be, it's not the case that P and not P. There's no way for something to be both simultaneously true and false. And the law of the excluded middle, which claims that no proposition is neither true nor false. There's no way a proposition can be something other than true or false. This is summarized in logic as, it is always the case that P or not P. So, these seem to be very, very intuitive laws, intuitive rules. It doesn't seem, at face, they can be doubted. But, the good skeptic can find ways to doubt almost anything. So, what about the statement, this statement is false? This is, of course, a famous paradox. If the statement is true, then it's false, by what the statement itself says. But, if the statement is false, then it's, in fact, false true, once again, by what the statement says. Therefore, this statement seems to be, at the same time, both true and false, and neither true nor false. At least it breaks one of those two laws we just mentioned, if not both of them. So, the very laws that underlie all of logic seem to be problematic. Well, what if we want to get out of this? What are we going to do? We're going to say something like, well, we're not going to allow self-referential statements. Those things are a little weird. We don't like them. And that's hopefully going to get rid of all of those nasty little paradoxes. This solution simultaneously goes too far and doesn't go far enough to solve the problem for truth. It goes too far in that we still want to say statements like this statement is true or all true statements are true are in fact true. However, if we say no self-referential statements are allowed, we can't do that. We're not allowed to say that this statement is true because it references itself, even though it seems to clearly be true. It also doesn't go far enough, because you still are left with paradoxes such as the statement below is true and the statement above is false, which I explain in another video. And neither of these statements reference themselves, they reference each other. And so, the no self-referential statements doesn't work to get rid of this problem, but it still causes a problem for truth and falsehood, because neither of these statements can be defined as solely true or false. It's either the case that they're both, both true and false, or they're something other than true or false. So, what if we go down the Tarski path? Parsky was a philosopher who thought a lot about truth. He said that, well, we're just going to not allow poorly formed statements. He has a very specific way of defining that. He even created his own language that doesn't allow for these statements that lead to these paradoxes. But this still leaves us with a problem. What about the statement, this statement is either false or poorly formed? If that statement is true, then it's false or poorly formed. So it can't be true. If it's false, then it's neither false nor poorly formed, so it has to be true. And if it's poorly formed, then it's true, because it's at least either false or poorly formed. So it's true and not poorly formed, which leads us to it therefore being false or poorly formed. This is a problem for any theory of truth that's going to attempt to solve this paradox. Now, no matter what Tarski had as his reasons for something being poorly formed, this would apply. And no matter what we put in there for no blank statements, we're going to still have a problem. Consider, 
no Q statements are allowed, or no statements that are Q, whatever criteria we want to have. We can always say this statement is either false or Q, just as we did with poorly formed, and it's going to cause a problem. That statement is not going to be true, false, or Q, whatever that third trimodal part of our logic is. It can't be any of them. If that wasn't convincing enough to make you doubt truth as a concept, check this out. A statement is true if and only if X, whatever we come up with a definition for X. How do we tell if our very definition of truth is, in fact, itself true? It seems to be very self-referential in the same type of thing as it's referencing, so it seems to be a really weird statement in itself, and there'd be no way for us to tell if it's true because it's justified as being true based on itself. It's circular reasoning. For example, a statement is true if and only if it corresponds to the world. How do we tell if the above statement is true? How do we know if that statement corresponds to the world? The only thing we have to show that it does is that statement itself. It's circular logic, and it's a problem for any possible definition of truth. I'll leave you with a quote from Alfred Whitehead. Informal logic. A contradiction is the signal of defeat. But in the evolution of real knowledge, it marks the first step in progress towards a victory. In the next video, we're going to check out a paradox discovered by Bertrand Russell while looking at these things and attempting to solve this problem that goes even deeper into the problem of truth. Watch this video and more at Cardiades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.